And I welcome everybody to round five. Feature match for this round, on the left is David Shields, on the right is Paulo Vitor Dama de Rosa. In the booth is myself, Ray Punzelan, and of course, Rashad Miller. Hey, we're gonna be watching uh, David Shields, who um, won, I think it's GP Dallas. Dallas-Fort Worth. I think he won GP Dallas-Fort Worth with Cobblade. Two. Okay, yeah. Uh, won Dallas-Fort Worth with Cobblade. He's playing Paul Vito Dama de Rosa, who has won, <laughs> won a whole bunch of things. Also a GP with Cobblade in Singapore. Leads off of the mountain. And just an island for your shields. That looks like a porcelain legionnaire for... That is a porcelain legionnaire. So that means Paulo Vito Dama de Rosa. Life is at 18. And a mortar pod comes into play for David Shields. A mortar pod immediately kills off the porcelain legionnaire just in case Paulo had some way to deal with it. Now another Phyrexian mana creature in the form of Spine Thopter, 2-1 Flyer. Paulo's deck appears to be the, a very aggressive build. Very, here. very aggressive. And those are the exact cards you want if you're playing in the aggressive seal deck or draft deck for that matter. At least three islands in Shield's hand. I think he needs them all. There's one island. What's that? What's that? Copper mirror. You think he's three color, or are we looking at some off color mirrors? Maybe off a tangle cord. Maybe everyone's playing all their tangle cords because they don't want to oh, get perfect. blue, blue <laughs> white flyers out. It's not too surprising if it's just an off color mirror, but in sealed, it's not also surprising if you're three colors. It's true. Sometimes you may have to make the extra reach in the other color pies there. Slices of the pie, rather. The two damage comes in. Dave is going to fall to 18. Paulo, sort of body in mind. Uh-oh. Is that a good one? It, it, it's protection from green and blue. And I don't see that being relevant right now. There's a lot of the, artifacts in this the, set. The only things that could block flying creatures in, shield, in Shield's deck, most of them are blue. I, there's some white, but a majority of the ones in the set, the common ones, are blue. So to be able to block the spine out there is going to be kind of difficult. I don't know. Paulo has to pay a blue to give it flying, right? No, this one's actual. This one's just oh, straight this up is, flying. Oh, this one just the, flying. the other one is a two-caster non fraction mana where you play a blue. Up, okay. oh, Mortar Pod. Look at that. Now what's happening? All right, so he equipped Mortar Pod, and then he attacked with Copper Mirror. It looks, looks like there to, pre to prevent Paulo from equipping and attacking. Paulo may just still equip. Oh, just, Paulo he, just swings there for right, two. He's just going to get the damage in. He's going to make him do it right now. What are you going to do? And then Paulo probably maybe lay another creature and equip that creature that can't just be picked off by Mortar Pod. Dave is not going to allow that to happen. Yeah, Dave has to get this value in there. Ooh, Ooh. remember the Fallen. Remember the Fallen. Uh, I like it even better than Mortar, uh, Morbid Plunder. It's Return of Artifact and or a creature to your hand. And a lot of times it does the same thing as Morbid Plunder or even better. Yeah. There's so many artifact creatures. You usually got to be returning one of them, and being able to get a non-creature artifact is just really good, really, really good. Say the sword of body mind died. That, that card never dies. <laughs> it just stays there. Here's a mirror propagator. Uh oh. It could be pretty annoying with mortar pot out yeah, there. Yeah, this is this is gonna get cute. He I makes a copy, equips it, make, and then <laughs> makes a copy with that guy. It sacks it, shoots, and then we we are infinite. Pay five mana to deal one damage. He can pay <laughs> as many five manas as he wants <laughs> to deal as many one damages as he wants. It doesn't sound as significant when you say it like that, but when we know that <laughs> Paulo just returned two one toughest creatures to his hand, <laughs> it's pretty significant. <laughs> but ooh, there is a, a fuel spitter. spitter. <laughs> Propagator is a two three, two. three colors right here for Paulo. Psychic barrier for a fume spitter. And shields counters a fume spitter. That guy's trouble. That's gonna try to break up some combos. Now Paulo doesn't just want to walk his guy, march his guys into mortar pods, so he's gonna be very careful here. But. He'll still play the Legionnaire. No Phyrexian mana pay this time. Just a full three. 
three one for striker there. This way, he makes shields aside if he has to use his mana on his turn just to pick it off. And then hopefully next turn he draws another land. And with Thopter, he can play the Phyrexian mana and equip the sword if Shields picks off the Legionnaire here. But Shields will probably wait. I think Shields just wants to assemble his combo so that he can look cool on camera. That's what I want to do. How to look cool on GG's live. So Mortarpod just jump, jumps in the Propagator, which is perfectly fine. Can make a copy of itself and uh, still do to keep the chain going. Some black card was drawn for Paulo, unsure what it was. All right. Porcelain Legionnaire comes in. Shields drops to 15. And the 2 2 in, uh, Infect. What is the name of it? The 2 2 Infect, where you sack a creature and it gets plus one, plus one. Flayer? Flare husk? No, that's the equipment. Oh, flare nim? <laughs> Something just that thinking, plays. The, the chat probably said it, but it's a 2-2 guy, you sack. It's an older card. How, it's an older card, so you won't be able to find it there. I'm pretty sure that's the card. Our chat probably said it. Flesh, flesh eater, eater amp. amp. See, flare, flare husk, not flare imp, flesh eater imp. You got the, you got the F right, the L. F L imp. Yeah, it's a FL imp. Well, you make a nice mere propagator. I think I do. I agree. A co copy of one. <laughs> I, I think this would have been a better token for choice of choice, but I don't know <laughs> if we have any of those over there. I gave him an assortment, so there should be a pile up there, including that one. Distant memories. This is search Ooh. for a card or let. Uh, well, you tutor for a card and then you show it. And you're like, can I have this card? And if he says no, you draw three. If he says yes, you got the card. <laughs> I, I think you just live with Diabolic Tutor that you get to see what they tutored for. And it's Divine Offering. <laughs> Paul, uh, Paul's thinking about this one. You might have to just let him draw here because his imp, his imp could wear that sword pretty nicely. Oh, he's drawing three cards. So instead, it is Concentrate. Tutor or concentrate? That's what that should be the name of the card. Except when you concentrate now, you have no chance of drawing the <laughs> card you tutored for. So you kind of have to find the middle ground one. This could get real interesting now. The sword's going to be super powerful. Just equip it to the imp. The way David Shields has been is playing this turn doesn't seem like he has a real answer to the imp. There's David Shields, Pro Tour, well not Pro Tour, um, Grand Prix Champion, Dallas-Fort Worth. Why? Shoots down the Porcelain Legionnaire. <coughs> and... And the new beer propagator in the form of Rashad gets equipped. Mortar probably doing some work here. Let's see what Paulo decides to do. There's one blue open for shields. There is a way he could bounce it or something, but Steel Sabotage returns the sword to the hand. And now Spine Thopter comes back into play for Paulo, taking another two. So for one turn, Shields was able to handle the sword with a Steel Sabotage, bouncing the sword. Normally you want to be countering that sword, but... Or maybe he has <laughs> another Steel Sabotage. Maybe he's going with the Double Sabotage. Also, David just could not afford to take four poison and mill two, ten cards and have him have the 2-2 two, two Green Wolf token. It's a lot of things that happens when you get hit by that. We'll bounce it and make Paulo have to draw in to be able to replay <laughs> it and equip next turn. Paul's been, you know, missing a lot of land drops. He's, he's stuck on four. Yeah, but his deck is also, we've seen how it plays. It doesn't need that much land. I'm, sure, of, I'm sure he wants that fifth land. Yeah, he wants the fifth land, but it's not like the fourth land has really been hurting him. Or some, if you're playing like the dinosaur archetype, you're just, I'm, I'm only on four lands, no chance I'm going to win this game.
or David's very healthy in the amount of his land, lands he has. There's a hippogriff. Is, hippogriff. Does it have a target? The mirror propagator, at the very least, we know. There's the copper mirror earlier that was destroyed, and mirror propagator is a choice. Mirror propagator it is, and he has a lot of mana, so he that that extra five mana to, to get his combo going doesn't, I mean, it doesn't seem that much anymore. <laughs> Now, the token that's in play, it's also a propagator, correct? Yes, so can, he just makes more propagators. Yeah, it was basically just a gain three life because I guess none of the other cards really mattered. No, he, all right, so Paulo will try to stick a sword. Then he equips a sword to the imp. See all if he's going to bite away more flesh off David here. Yeah, that, all that seems legit. That's I mean, David Shields isn't doing anything, and we're attacking with the 2-2 two -two Flesh Eater Imp. You could call it Flare Imp if you want. Thanks. I know. I, 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 don't, I, don't <laughs> like, I, heard, I felt it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like three-word mm -hmm. card names. I try to stay away from those. Unless it's a um, legendary creature, and there's a comma somewhere. So Shields will block here. But if he blocks and pings with a mortar pod, Paulo could just easily save it with the Spine Thopter. Ooh, protection Ooh. from black. So there's a possible blessing. Oh, shrug, sure. <laughs> Alright, you got a 3-3 uh, three, three flying protection from black creature, and I have a 4-4 four, four black creature. All the damage Paulo has done has been, uh, Paulo has had on him is done by, done by himself. Four Phyrexian guys. Eight life. <laughs> David Shields has not actually removed any life from Paulo. Now might be the time to strike. It's almost like David Shields is on the infect plan. His opponent starts at 10. <laughs> <laughs> We're clo closing in on it. And goes the Hippogriff. I don't know if I would like seeing that if Apollo, he's attacking with a Hippogriff. Does this mean my, fle uh, my Flesh Eater Imp is going to get there? It's three damage. Paul's already at a pretty low life total. Now he's going to be he's going to be at nine, which is, I mean, it's manageable. You could win that race against a Poison deck. Yeah, yeah. if we look at a perspective, Paulo is at nine and David is at eight or uh, eight, right? <laughs> it, it, he needs it, a, it would be um, if we uh, do it in the poison way. Well, he needs yeah. eight more poison, so eight nine. <laughs> well, it'd be sixteen damage. Please that sixteen. But he takes two for every hit. We'll see what shields does here. Taps two white, two blue, and Jace the mind sculptor. Right, that's what happens here. A glitter, a glimmer post stag. He's gonna stag his hippogriff. Hippogriff is not getting back anything. It's like. not. In a, it's not back into play yet. Oh, it comes back at the end of turn. Yeah. The propagator is going to make a copy of himself. Look at that. That's the ray of Rashad token. And then propagator is gonna get sacked to the mortar pot. Gets rid of the spine thopter. Then we rebuy back on top of the mortar pod with the new propagator. Hippogriff comes back. And <laughs> what do we get back? Do we get back our propagator? Copper mirror. We got back copper mirror. The so original propagator is already in hand. So now David's board looks pretty nice. And Paulo, oh, Volt Charge. And Paulo will be able to pro uh, proliferate here too. Three damage and proliferate. So down goes the down goes the hippogriff and three poison for Dave. Finally a hit from the sword. And in comes another hit from the sword. That's gonna be four more. Shows you how powerful the sword is. It's been trying to get the one hit in. <laughs> this is the first hit in, and it's gonna be pretty good. Yep, there's a wolf. Here comes a mill of fifteen. <laughs> the wolf there's a golem in play, actually. Or a mill of ten. <laughs> Let's see, there's Origin Spell Bomb, False Cure. A couple lands. See, Paul's taking a good look at that graveyard. He's basically just 
trying to find out what's in the deck. Got to be prepare for your the next two games if it goes to two, two more games. That wolf is a nice chump blocker, or it's some food for yeah. the imp. <laughs> or it's plus one, plus one. But David's already at seven, uh, seven poison. So. Hollow's going to probably block here to avoid any any unexpected death. Oh, he, is he going to take? Oh, he takes it. So Apollo drops a six. I guess he went through the math and decided there's no risk there. Well, if maybe Shields is playing something. Like mutagenic growths, and Paulo would have been just shaking his head yeah, if that happened. Matter. He scoops it up, so. But, but that's not going to happen, yep. <laughs> Game one goes to Paulo Vitor, really on how powerful the sword was. Did Paulo win? I'm pretty sure Paulo won. We didn't hear it, but people scooped. <laughs> there we go. There's our winner of that game. And we'll guess while we went for game two. David Shields could blame Kibler for Paulo Olton getting past this sword, this sword of body and mind in his pool. I guess, I guess he could be. So, as usual, Game Make Center reminds you to always blame Kibler. Go to GameMakeCenter.com, buy all your magic needs, supplies, including Blame Kibler Monster Binders and t shirts. If you want to check them out on Facebook, blame Kibler for your anything you want to blame it for. Just go to tinyurl slash blamekibler. That will direct you to their Facebook page. And to save 10% on all your purchases off gaming, etc., just use the code GG's Live at the end of your purchase. So thank you, Gaming Etc. for sponsoring the show this weekend. You know, I try not to blame Kibler for things nowadays. You blame Kibler for everything. No, I'm, I'm turning over a new leaf. You're going to make your own website? Um, blame Blame who? It's, it's, no it's no it's not take fault for your action dot com yeah <laughs> <laughs> take fault for your actions <laughs> take fault for your own actions dot com but what in the meanwhile I haven't bought that um, domain yet so until then you could just visit Blaine Kibler yeah just go to Blaine Kibler on gimmeetcetera dot com or their Facebook page someone's gonna buy that and they're gonna try to sell it to you I want one, I I want one it then yeah you know, you're like I'll just make something else yeah, I'll, I'll do something else. It wasn't me dot com. <laughs> <laughs> I'll throw in a couple there so no one will ever know what to be doing. What to pick. Players in standard number two for the right of the main stage. So let's see, Paul, could be maybe compl it's been a while since we've had a back to back Grand Prix winner. I feel like it's been a while. I feel like it's also Martin been done Yusa? within... Didn't Martin Yusa do it? Did he do it back-to-back -back last year, did he? I thought he did it last year, back-to-back -back Grand Prix. Um, Grand Prix, that could be right. It feels like a while, but I wouldn't be surprised if I just missed it. It's really hard to do something like that. These fields are not very small. The back-to-back, -back, a giant tournament like this is quite impressive. I mean, I could do it. You mean cover back to back? Yeah. Yes, yes. Oh wait, what are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, we were talking about covering. Okay. And, uh, yeah, you can do I, it. <laughs> I've already done it. I've covered back to back to back to back Grand Prix already. That's really good. Thanks. It's actually pretty hard to do. I don't know if you've done back to back to back because there's like some foreign ones that sneak in there. I don't think there are any foreign ones between these three. You're so lucky, the first three. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so lucky. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We're looking at our opening seven, and we are keeping both of these. All right, David Shields chooses to draw. Not uncommon in this format. Origin spell bomb is his start. Paulo does have the dreaded sword in his hand. Melton is going to be the end point for Paulo, but no two drop there. It's a good thing I turned over that new leaf of, um, you know, not blaming anyone for my issues because we have <laughs> we have Brian Kibler in the booth. Hello, hello. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing well. Still a little tired, but uh, managed to get off to a good start in this tournament so far. 
you are undefeated. I am. I have won all the matches I've played, which is two. So we're watching Paulo here who took down game one with a pretty aggressive red, white, black deck with the, the ideal Phyrexian mana two, dro two drops per se. <laughs> But ultimately finishing his opponent with a sort of body of mind on a, a pretty good one. flesh eater imp. <laughs> Doesn't feel good to be hit by that. Is this really an implant on a mirror? It's like, yes, your mirror this, dies, this is, and I, I get want, a mirror. Yeah, I want this mirror. So he basically just mind controlled that mirror. That's pretty much what's going to happen. Unless Malo has big plans, we just I mean, don't know. He, oh, he, oh, he has a sword in his yeah, hand. Yeah, I, I, I saw he the has sword. A sword. He, must, he must just be like really light on creatures. See what Shields has? I see, it looks like a mortar pod in his hand. A wing slicer. I would rather kill that. <laughs> Paul takes a reason. Like, hmm. We actually did a draft earlier today where Paul had two wing splicers and he just read his opponent's wing splicer. Just to make sure it still does the same it's thing. Like, hey, He's hey, like, hey, was so I just... playing it right? <laughs> Paul's like, that last plan didn't work out how I wanted it to. So I'll play my sen this sensor spicer. He actually he may have been reading whether it's golems or golems you control. Right. Which way? Which is it? It is golems you control. Oh. Pretty much all the lords nowadays ha have moved from being global to being personal. But precursor golem still affects them all. It's true. So even, even <laughs> when you don't want them to. <laughs> <laughs> David Shields cracks in for three. And that is a shattered angel coming down on David Shield's side of the board. Oh. I see that guy go remarkably late in drafts. It, really? It's pretty strange. Because, I mean, as a as a 3 3 flyer for you know for five, it, it, which once upon a time was I mean, that's the, the, the stuff of first pick. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no. it, it, it has a, a pretty relevant ability. The, uh, the life game, whenever your opponent plays a land, uh, can definitely uh, help swing races pretty significantly, especially if it comes down early. Paul got to think carefully now. They steal the guy's sword plan. We didn't work out, so <laughs> time to come up well, with this. <laughs> I mean, the, the 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 sword is still actually pretty awesome here. He can sword up his golem, which has vigilance. Right. Yeah. Uh, his opponent's wing splicer can't block because the sword of body in mind is blue. So he'd be in, in a position where he either has to take the damage or just chump with the shattered angel, which uh, he's, I, I imagine he certainly wouldn't want to do. I think Paul was imagining that <laughs> sword not sticking Paulo, around very long, though. Yeah. Well, so getting, getting one, one hit with sword of body and mind is pretty powerful. It but gets you a guy. If, if, if a game's going to go long, it could potentially lead to decking. So this game looks to be uh, pretty bloody so far. Paul also has uh, Remember the Fallen in his deck to get back his sword in case it does go down. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and there's a wolf. Shields just shrugs, takes it, and here we go. Looks like the plan might be the flying beatdown. Yeah, I mean, he you know, he certainly isn't gonna just let, let uh, those guys jump in front of uh, the sword of golem. Uh, I don't know. We I mean, haven't really been able to make out Paul's hand. I believe I did see an artillerize, which can certainly help uh, prevent the shadow angel from getting out of control. Or I mean, if you just kill the wing splicer, the, yeah. that other golem becomes you know a non-factor. So Paulo sees the mutagen and growth on the top of David Shields' pile. It's a good thing to know that it's in his deck in case it goes game three. It is sort of interesting. Uh, I, I think very few players would have made the play that Paulo made with the parasitic implant there on turn four on his opponent's mirror token. Yeah. Um, and if, if, we, if we look at you know the way this game is played out, Paulo's just used all of his mana for every turn so far. So the, you know that mirror. You know, while while he, he did use a removal spell on you know, his opponent's his opponent's token, it would have been doing a little work. Well, <laughs> well, that, you know, that that mirror potentially could be relevant. Yeah. It could have blocked that sorted guy, yep. which is yeah. which is you know a, a significant factor. Uh, and yeah. the uh, he he would have had no opportunity to play given the way the game has played out. So it's very interesting when you look at the way that that, that some players you know of of you know very few players are of Paulo's caliber. But mapping out their turns rather than just figuring out, do I want to use this on this? It's like, well, when will I have an opportunity to use this? What are the implications if my opponent, you know, if, if I don't use this spell as optimally as I might want, but it gets the best use of your mana over the course of the game? So again, David Shields is playing a distant, mem uh, distant memory. Last time he searched out a divine offering, threatening to destroy the sort of body of mine, and he'll do it again. And I'm assuming, like last time, Paul is just going to say, take three. <laughs>
This of Memories is a card that I haven't really seen get played very much. I think it's, a lot it's, of players, certainly, it's certainly a, a pretty good card right here. I think a lot of players just go, hey, this is a blue Diabolic Tutor that sometimes doesn't work. But I get three cards in this cast. Yeah, well, I mean, a, lot of, a lot of times, too, the uh, what ends up happening is uh, a lot of players will want to use Distant Memories in a deck where they have one sort of major bomb, like an Elish Norn or a Karn. Uh, and, you know, they, they, they end up losing their Elish Norn or a Karn from their deck if they Distant Memories for it. Whereas in a deck where you're just getting sort of utility stuff like a, a Divine Offering, I think it's, I think it's actually a, probably a better card because, you know, your, your opponent... Uh, doesn't you know? Can sometimes just say yeah, yeah, sure. If if, if they give you the three extra cards, you're not losing your best card out of your deck. All right. So Shields cracks in for six, then plays a Mortar Pod. That Mortar that Mortar Pod's a pretty big deal because uh, it, it produces a black creature which can block the Sorted Golem. Paulo has the Artillerized in his hand. What else did he have? I am not sure what he picked yeah, up. Does he have any way to remove the Mortar Pod? If you remove the mortar pod, that gets the germ out of the way. Shields has been, taken one hit from the sword. I'm kind of curious how many cards left in his library. One hit and he drew... He removed four cards with distant memories. And that's true, so... it's a lot of cards that have... Uh... <laughs> Paula moves over it to the, to, to the mirror. It. Everyone's coming. Let's see how Shield plays this turn out. So it looks like it's just the, the mortar pod token blocking the germ. And it'll probably it'll shoot throw it down. Splicer. Or, oh, to oh. the face. So that puts Paula to eight life. So if he if he takes the hits from the so take one, two, three, four, golem plus the mortar pod finishes them off. But volt charge. That will that will solve the issue of potentially dying next turn. And let's him play a land. That will give me the opponent life. So we're at nine apiece. And uh, Paulo's looking at it like he's in a pretty commanding position, especially that we know he has the artillerized in his hand. He only needs to get in a little more damage before uh, before it's lethal. And it looks like Shield has a grip full of land. I see there, like a psychic barrier, I think. There's a white card that might be Dispense Justice. I don't want to say it is, but <laughs> it yeah. might be it. Dispense Justice isn't super exciting right here. There's a 1-1 one -one yeah. you can take it for the team. The wait, the token, that, token the golem's artifact. artifact. Yep. So we still need one he more still artifact. Still have to have one more artifact and the defense justice. Maybe I'm just trying to excite everyone there. The potential. <laughs> <laughs> what could it be? It could be a boat. <laughs> Being extra careful here because he knows he's in range of just losing the game next turn. Uh, that looks like Hero Bladehold. Oh yeah, that is. That's what I thought was uh, Dismiss Justice. Hero Bladehold is a little bit more exciting, though not clearly better in this situation. I think I'm just used to that pre-release one. <laughs> that picture on that one. It's Hero of Bladehold, fuel, fuel for the cause. The card next to it, I can't tell. And then it looks like land. Oh, there's another spell in there. Is that an Impaler Shrike? It... Huh. Sky Scrap school? Scrap Diver? <laughs> oh, that, is that Scrappy Daffy? I don't. Uh, let's see. Oh, yep, it is. It is. So that All leaves right. him. Uh, this is just. I believe this is just over. That leaves him with no non blue blockers, and uh, Apollo has the sword on a guy and artillerized in his hand. Yeah, so he just. So he sword, swords, sword. Up the, swords up the golem, attacks, artillerizes, and the game's over. Paul's not gonna waste any time. Again, just <laughs> again, he's gonna take this game down with a sword. Boom! And that's it. So Paulo Vitor Damodarosa takes the match two games to zero, advancing to five and zero. 
David Shields drops to four and one. We have uh, nine rounds to play today, so four more rounds after this. The, these, both these players have come off of three buys, which is always nice. <laughs> 